we are going to get Wes and Sandy and all of the kids up here. So before we kind of officially, officially start, I need to tell you a story because last year, we were trying to figure out at what point it was, last year Wes came to me and he said, well, he said, would it be appropriate for us to baptize some of the kids as part of the covenant under myself and Sandy or do we need to wait until they're believers for themselves? I said, well, no, they need to wait until they're believers for themselves. <laughs> and then God smited me. And uh, so anyway, it was, it was shortly after that that my own studies in covenant theology started changing my view of baptism. And so then several weeks ago, when we announced some of that and then uh, proceeded subsequently to baptize my children and Jonathan's children and Jacob's children, Wes came back to me and said, what's up? <laughs> You know, so this is, uh, this is a special moment for their family and for our church, and it's also kind of an act of repentance on my part. So um, what we have today, though, is kind of, a, kind of an unusual situation, although it's one that is really special for us. Uh, Tyler and Chandler are both going to be baptized as believers because I've, I've talked to them. Jonathan and Jacob have both spent a lot of time with them, and they profess a faith in Jesus Christ uh, and an understanding of the gospel that we believe is, is adequate for that. And then Tessa and Brennan are going to be baptized as covenant kids, but we're going to do all of them by immersion today per the family request. So this is a special moment. So what we're going to do, you should have an order of the service that, uh, that was in your bulletin. Again, we're providing that so that you can take it home and reflect. But I'm going to read through that briefly and then uh, after we take the vows uh, as a family, we're going to go to the back and, and get ready and Jacob will have a couple of remarks during that time. In Matthew 18 that we recited a few moments ago, Jesus came and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Today we are witnessing two expressions of new covenant baptism. Chandler and Tyler will be baptized as confessing believers in Jesus Christ, and Tessa and Brennan will be baptized as covenant children based on the faith of their guardians, in this case, their grandparents, Wes and Sandy. Baptism has been given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ as both a sign and seal of the new covenant, marking those who are visibly in fellowship with the church and who are outwardly participants in the covenant of grace. Baptism is a visible representation of a person's being united with Christ, sanctified by His blood, anointed by the Holy Spirit, cleansed of sin, and set apart as belonging to God. Baptism of our children is a reminder that we are born in sin and need to be cleansed, that we are not innocent or basically good, but are by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But it also signifies the covenant holiness of a believer's children, acknowledging the graciousness of God in placing these children in a covenant home where they will be taught to know, love, and serve the Lord Jesus. Baptism of believers is a reminder that only by being united with Christ can we be saved. Faith is necessary, but by itself it is not enough. We are not saved because we believe. We are, we are saved because Christ atoned for our sins on the cross and rose again, reconciling us to God. We are justified through faith, receiving and resting in Christ alone. But our salvation is God's work, not ours. Pay careful attention to the way we're saying that. We're not saying that faith is not enough to save us because it needs baptism as well. We're saying that faith couldn't save you unless Jesus had died and that it is ultimately the work of Christ that makes it possible for us to be saved through faith. This morning, as you see these children receive baptism and hear Chandler and Tyler's confessions of faith, I exhort you as a congregation to reflect upon your own confession and the event of your own baptism. The Lord has placed His name and claim upon you. You belong wholly to Him. He calls us daily to faith and repentance, and He reminds us by the visible signs of the covenant, which in our case are baptism and the Lord's Supper. He reminds us of His work of grace on our behalf. So today be mindful of God's grace and of His covenant faithfulness, and be assured anew of His love. 
We recognize when we baptize our children that infants and young children of the church do not understand the significance of baptism yet. And some people would say that because they lack understanding, they should not be baptized. But when Abraham, the believer, was commanded to be circumcised, God also told him to circumcise his infant sons. And in this way, our utter dependence upon God's gracious work is signified. It is not we who come to God, but He who graciously draws us to Himself. In the New Covenant, baptism has taken the place of circumcision as the sign of initiation into the covenant. But God's commitment to households and the holiness of a believer's children have not changed. Paul told the Philippian jailer, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Our children are not saved because they are baptized, nor are they saved because their parents or grandparents believe. Each of our children is still under obligation to repent and trust in Christ, but we should not underestimate the significance of their participation in a believing home. Faith is the gift of God, and it is no coincidence, and I want to especially emphasize that today, it is no coincidence that these children are in your home. Right? Somebody had a plan. It wasn't you. Somebody had a plan. It was God. So we believe on the Lord Jesus, and so we will be saved and our household. Now, even though Chandler and Tyler are of sufficient age and maturity to confess their own faith in the Lord Jesus, and they will before they are baptized, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and include you guys in the covenant vows as well because they're still living under Wes and Sandy's roof and are subject to their instruction. Abby, of course, is already a confessing believer and been baptized, and we thank God for that. And so, Wes and Sandy, I'm going to lead you now. Do you acknowledge that although our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore are subject to condemnation, they are holy in Christ by virtue of the covenant of grace and as children of the covenant are to be baptized? Do you promise to diligently teach to Chandler, Tyler, Tessa, and Brennan the principles of our holy Christian faith revealed in the Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Do you promise to pray regularly with Chandler, Tyler, Tessa, and Brennan and to set an example of piety and godliness before them? And do you promise to endeavor by all the means that God has appointed to bring Chandler, Tyler, Tessa, and Brennan up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, encouraging them to appropriate for themselves the blessings and to fulfill the obligations of the covenant? Praise God. Wes and Sandy, it is a special privilege and joy to celebrate the baptism of these children today. And we thank God for you all and for His work of grace in your lives. It is an encouragement that you have no idea how encouraging it is to so many of us. Um, as your brother in Christ and pastor of this congregation, I want to urge and exhort you both to keep the word that you've given to God to keep covenant that you have to nurture and train these children to rely humbly on His grace, to be diligent in the use of the means, the ordinary means of that grace, bringing them to hear the Word preached and to the church in worship and in prayer so that you may never take Christ for granted and that you and your children may be saved. God has done a great, great thing. He's used amazing circumstances to bring children to Himself. And we praise Him for that. Let's bow and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give You thanks for Wes and Sandy and for Abby and for Tyler and for Chandler and for Tessa and for Brennan. I thank You, Father, for this household, this family, living under the same roof, sharing together in the Word, in worship, in prayer, learning together more and more about You and about Your Son. And now, Father, standing before the congregation, placing the sign of the covenant on these children, two of whom believe and, and two of whom will believe, we believe by Your gracious providence that these children will be brought to You, and we pray for that. We pray that You would do that work in their lives. And we pray that You would bless this family. They might, they might grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that You would help us as a church 
to be faithful in encouraging and helping them in every way that we can so that you might be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Jacob, I'm going to ask you to take this as well for me. Just leave it running. All right, as they are getting all ready, we want to charge you as the congregation as well. As these children are baptized into Christ, they are recognized formally and publicly as members of His visible church. They are outwardly part of the covenant of grace, and it is our obligation to so love, encourage, and support them that the grace promised and signified in baptism will be truly theirs through faith in Jesus Christ. We are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Christ claims these children as his own and calls us to welcome them in love and commitment for the nurturing of their souls. Do you, brethren, commit yourselves in the presence of God to help and support Chandler, Tyler, Tessa, and Brennan with the rest of their family by diligent and faithful participation in the worship and work of the church by living as godly examples, and by praying for their faith and salvation. If so, say we do. Praise God. Let's pray one more time. Father, we do thank you for this time we have together. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured out on us through Christ, the covenant that you have made by his shed blood. And Father, as we witness these baptisms today, Lord, may we be called to live in light of our own baptism, God, that we would remember the work of Christ to cleanse our hearts from sin. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you think we need to leave you there? If you step down, yeah, I will, I will. Maybe we should stay there, because if you turn, if you step down, nobody will see you. You'll almost have baptized yourself at that point. Okay. All right, so let's just turn you around a little bit. Okay. All right. Tyler, I want you to cross your hands in front of you. Grab your wrists like that. Like that. There we go. Okay. Tyler, I'm going to ask you two questions. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? God. Do you believe that He died on the cross so that you might be forgiven of your sins? Very good. In in obedience to the command of the Lord Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, Chandler. There you go. All right, I'm going to ask you the same two questions. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? I know you do. And do you believe that He died on the cross so that you might be forgiven of your sins? Praise God. In obedience to the command of the Lord Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tessa, I don't have to ask you any questions. How far can you come down? You want to go all the way down, but if you go all the way down, nobody's going to be able to see you. Can everybody kind of see you? Yes? Kind of, sort of? You want me to grab the chair? Or We're all right? Okay. All right, sweetie. You want to cross your arms as well? Tessa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and Brennan. Oh. All right. You know what? I think, yeah, we are going to come out here with you. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do it this way. All right. Are you going to put your own nose? Yes? Okay. Well, you better do it. Brennan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank <laughs> you.